So I was watching this thing late last night. Um, it was a wild little introduction that Ford put on over there. I guess just outside Detroit, they had this huge projection and they did it at nighttime. Mm. And I think I was watching 930 my time. And of course, it was all about the electrification of Ford and all these dinosaurs coming online, so to speak, as far as electric vehicles are concerned, because this is a big one here. I think this particular situation is bigger than what they did with the Mach-E, because you know how it is with the F-150. You know, it's just a huge, it's just a monster in the automotive game. Mm -hmm. And Tesla, you and I were talking before we started rolling, feels kind of like a missed opportunity to get their truck out in the world. And I know they had all, they were, there was preoccupation. It's hard to make cars and, and, they had their moment with the Cybertruck, but they just didn't. I gave them, I don't know, a few hundred dollars once upon a time. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear anything. Some people are starting to hear something. Actually, I'm going to talk a little bit more about it in a moment. Cybertruck's a whole different thing, though. You and I were talking how is every single uh, tradesperson going to want to roll up to the job site in a Cybertruck? Maybe not. Maybe there's a comfort level to a traditional form factor. Mm -hmm. But the point being is more around or, or my perception on the state of things as it is right now is more around Tesla's availab availability, ability to deliver. Because we had a story from the other day about uh, that one MMA fighter, Darius was saying, where's my Model X? I ordered it way back when. And people, when it comes to Tesla, or I guess any brand that they really love, brands with a ton of fandom and hype, and also brands that innovate. Br brands that have charismatic individuals at the helm, like your pal Elon Musk. People will put up with delays. People will put up with things maybe not being necessarily perfect. People will... That'll be part of the gig as they make these decisions. You're right. But up to a certain point. Up to a certain point and up to a certain amount of competition. Correct. Because when it was the only game in town as far as electric vehicle options, when it was a Tesla or nothing at all, you were like, no, nah, no, nah, I won't be on this train. I want that electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. And then all these things start to percolate. The Rivians, the Hummers. The Rivians, the Hummers, and the Fords of the world. Yeah. Now, Rivian is kind of in that startup category yeah. as well. It's, they're charging a premium price. We just checked up like $100,000 to start. So it's kind of a different market what Rivian's going after with their truck. It's a pretty looking thing. You know, they got Bezos money and all this stuff going on. <laughs> I don't mind what they're up to. It's more of a polished thing. But if we're talking mass market, because, you know, we're talking about uh, EV adoption. When you're out in the street and you're counting trucks, for every luxury truck, there's 10 work trucks. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the question is, can you take any of those work trucks and convert them to electric? Can you make that pitch to any of those individuals? Now, I know there's still going to be some drawbacks like range. When I saw them say, okay, it's going to have 300 miles, I was like, eh, to one thing, and I'm talking about the Lightning, by the way, at this moment. Lightning, mm -hmm. Ford F-150 Lightning. Did I say the word Lightning yet? No, I don't think you It's have. crazy, man. I assume people knew what I was talking about because it's the only thing that is the most recent announcement, and it's uh, we got all the information. Now, actually, the best video you can watch is number eight on trending right now, the all-electric F-150 Lightning turning electric into Lightning. Ford. And so they go on with the deep voice and the narrator. We done been doing it. We're Ford. Many years, hundred years. Yeah, trucks. We made a couple. You know how these things go. Mm. And then they got some cool demos and they're like, look at the front trunk. And they're like, oh, were you a part of those blackouts? Were you a part of the the uh, situation there in, in Texas when you had no electricity? Oh, you could power the house with the truck. And everything just seems polished for a company that, well, you wondered how they were going to eventually get here. 
Mm-hmm. And it looks like they got here. Now, they kept a very safe design. You mentioned this. They put the light bar in the front, but ultimately, this thing is pretty interchangeable with the other F-150 vehicles. When you see them side by side, you're just like, oh, if you're comfortable with it. And, and they even said they took shots in the thing in the promo video. They said, it looks like a truck because it is a truck. Mm. It's like, oh, apologies. It's also very logical. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it is. <laughs> when you, if you think about a form to do the job of a truck, you end up here in, in, sure, yeah. initially, at least, mm-hmm. before you get all wild and crazy. Now, I'm torn because I've, I've had F 150s over the years. And I'm torn because there's part of me, the chaotic side of it, which is like, oh, yeah, balls to the wall, cyber truck all day, take risks, uh, jump off a cliff. Like the fun side, the spontaneous side, the side of me that's like, look at me in a cyber truck right now. Everybody has a little bit of that side. Even you, Will. Uh-huh. You can have that a little piece. Then there's the other side. There's a side of you that's being reasonable and logical and practical. And you say, I got, wait, do I got to drive this thing every day? I got to park this thing every day? Uh-huh. I got to go into every parking lot and constantly be the center of attention when I roll up with that cyber truck if I get it delivered, when I get it delivered. Another thing truck buyers think about, uh, reliability. Where do I take it? How many dealers? Have I purchased from them before? Mm-hmm. You've got all these sales representatives and a huge footprint of potential dealers and service and everything else. Yeah. Ford knows how to make trucks. Well, they've been making trucks. Mm-hmm. So this one can tow. It's the most torque they ever put into a truck, and you can thank the electric for that. It's got a giant screen, similar to the Mach-E. I think they said it's a 15-inch display on there. In the portrait orientation with a large volume knob, they kept that one physical knob on the display, which we got to test out. It's true when it comes to volume. It is nice to have an up, so whatever. They kept that on there. The, they made a big deal out of power, not just powering your house, but powering all your stuff. Mm. 11 separate outlets on it. So you got all your power tools charging up. You got all your, I mean, they think about a lot of these knick-knacky type things that you can put to use as a truck owner because they've probably been hearing from truck owners for a couple of years about what they're looking for. They did enhance lighting on the exterior of the vehicle from previous versions. On the inside, I like the flip down thing and they have it in the other new F-150s. I don't have one of the newest F-150s, but there's like a desk on mm-hmm. the inside in the cabin. It's going to be in the Lightning as well. And then that front trunk, actually useful utilitarian space. Styling, kind of subdued, not trying to scream at you when it rolls up. Just smoothed out, just just slick. You know what I'm saying, Will? Slick. Now, some people are upset about the Lightning naming because there was a real fast truck. I believe it was a short cab truck, street truck that they called the Lightning many years back. So people oh, were like, yo, why you got to step on that? Oh. But of course, el- electricity and Lightning, I mean, it was too easy, right? It went that direction. It was too easy. Yeah. But here's the thing. Elon woke everybody up. Credit where credit is due. It put pressure on the whole thing. It put pressure on the whole market. It expedited the process of everybody getting into electric. Ford would probably tell you the same. Elon went on Twitter and said, I want to congratulate Ford for uh, getting to this point and mm-hmm. and, uh, and accelerating the electrification. More or less. I mean, it's not a direct quote over here. <laughs> For the world, for the environment, for technology in general, this is a big thing. It's a big thing that the F-150 did it. Huge sales volume, huge footprint, huge origin, Ford Motor Company. This is a big deal. Yes. And the fact that you pointed out, like, there's three simple options for trucks. You want diesel, gas, or electric. Mm. That's it. That's that's your options, and it's simple. Okay, you know, pick and choose. So that that in a way, your choice of how you power the vehicle 
doesn't necessarily have to affect or impact the appearance of the vehicle mm -hmm. to a, to a huge extent. Now, I know the Lightning has the light bar. It, it does look a little bit different, but it's not like a huge departure from the other models that are being that you see on the street that are being sold. So it'd be really interesting to see what people go for, but the job site thing, seeing cyber trucks on a job site, I don't know. Maybe that happens. But I'm curious to see if that does. And now that all the giants woke up, now that you got GM playing in there, you got Ford playing in there, it's going to put more pressure on Tesla, obviously. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's really no way around it. But one thing it'll do, it'll lift the whole thing up. The comfort level with electric, it's all happening right now. Anyway, you can pre-order the thing. That's the other thing that I need to mention before I move on. A price point starting at around $39,000. That's a key because, as you mentioned, the Rivian is not in that area at all. Did you have it on there? What, did they put the price of the Rivian? Oh, uh, see, so why do they have... They have the Rivian listed as 71 That's Oh, I must have been seeing Canadian prices. Anyway, scroll down Rivian. 67.77. So it's a different class for sure. And what's the one one twelve thousand? The Hummer. Yep. So that's, uh, that's a, a whole different class as well. But look at that, 39900 They undercut the base price on the Cybertruck, yep. right? Yep. No, 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 that's the Cybertruck. This is the Cybertruck. They're a little right higher than the base price on the Cybertruck by $74. That's interesting. So Ford comes a little higher. It's not going to be as fast as the Cybertruck. The bed is actually a little shorter than the Cybertruck in this particular chart. So, yeah, we'll have to see. But, but oh, once you put the incentives in there as well, it's going to come in even less than 39000 mm -hmm. So those price points have a huge part to play in adoption for obvious reasons and whether people are actually going to consider the thing. Uh, but it does go up depending on the trim level you get. Anyway, shout out to Ford. Congrats. You did something. And I'm glad that the option exists for people now to just keep their pickup truck but electrified. Mm -hmm. as opposed to necessarily having to go to the extent. It doesn't mean I don't, the Cybertruck ain't fun. It's not what it means. Yeah, it's very fun. It's very fun, but fun, you know, fun isn't all the time. You, you, I mean, sometimes, you, a lot of guys on a job site aren't going to say I'm having a blast right now. They're going to say I got to get this done right now. Uh -huh. So there's a utilitarian aspect, which, uh, you know, that Cybertruck might be a little flamboyant for certain circumstances. I'm just saying. All right. <laughs> you scared of the word flamboyant? You can do a definition if you don't, if you're worried about it. No, it's fine. You know, let's get a definition it's, just oh. to make sure we're on, we're on point here. It's a little flamboyant. See, I remember the word flamboyant from Big L. Oh, yeah? Tending to attract attention because of exuberance, confidence, and stylishness. You see, oh, okay. it's the exact word I want. You panicked. I saw it. I felt <laughs> it. You panicked that I meant something yeah, else. Yeah, I guess it was uh, just interpreted differently in my mind based mm -hmm. on, uh, you know, you see, I felt culture. That. You see, I felt that. <laughs> yeah, and you know. But I've been listening. I'll tell you, Flamboyant for Life, Big L, rest in peace. Like, this is a, this is a famous. Yeah, I prefer that mentality, that definition. I mean, even look on the right in architectural style, a form of late Gothic architecture that developed in Europe in the late Middle Ages and the Renaissance. Oh, yeah. It's a style, man. It's yeah. a style to it. There's a time and place for it. You might want to wear a fancy outfit, but you might not want to wear it every day. Mm. And a truck is every day. I'm just saying it's different, different choices. I like choices. Uh -huh. Today's sponsor, speaking of choices, give you all the choices. Today's sponsor is Honey. Letting you shop all over the place helps you find coupon codes on 30,000 plus sites. So you're not overpaying for all the goods you want to buy online. I mean, we're all shopping online. It's what we do. Uh, you All you got to do is add it to Chrome. That's it. You just add it straight into the browser. And next time you're over there shopping, you don't even have to think about it. It's going to search the web. As you sit there in the cart, you're about to check out. You add in seconds. Few clicks. It's free. You shop as you normally would, and they will automatically look for codes on select sites. But like I said, it's 30,000 sites. And then they'll tell you how much you save. Boom, automatically apply. They do the work, and then 
you keep doing what you do. Maybe mm. it's uh, Nike shoes, as they have in their example right there. I know Willie Do did something funny the other day. He was actually over on the other sponsor's website. Yeah. One of our <laughs> other sponsors. Yeah. He was buying some stuff, and he was and he had the honey installed, and he actually found a discount code instantaneously and then i had to say to will wait you gotta use our discount code you can't be looking like, no no random discount Honey. codes but you see how that works like they'll yeah. find the best one if there happens to be a better one actually the discount he ended up getting was the same as our discount code mm -hmm. but the point being is honey's gonna make sure you don't forget yes. once you install it into the browser it's gonna make sure that you don't forget to check if coupon codes are out there that exist best part is it's free it takes like three clicks to install all you got to do is head over to, where do you got to head? Honey, joinhoney.com slash Lou later. That is joinhoney.com slash Lou later, L-E-W-L-A-T-E-R. And uh, that'll let them know that we sent you over there. You can also click the link in the description. It's free. It installs in a few seconds and it's going to save you cash on the web. Mm. Honey. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about this Cybertruck. I don't know if this is a coincidence or not, but Tesla apparently started contacting Cybertruck buyers recently, and buyers, people who gave them $100. I don't know what it was. That's the new thing. Remember the canoe lifestyle vehicle? They're like, give us 100 Just mm -hmm. Let's have 100 I think Rivian wanted 1000 they just, everybody wants you partially involved, but I don't even know how to buy a car anymore because I don't even remember how many companies have my hundred. Yeah. You can't just go to like a car dealership and just get a car. Well, you definitely can. And you probably, <laughs> no, no. and you probably should if you need one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest with you right now. This, uh, I got the delays on the model S plaid and have no idea. I have no idea. Like if I really needed a car, and I had plans or I had a job I was going to get to with it. Or in the case of Dariush, I had a baby coming and needed extra space for the car seat and, and all the stuff that goes. Because you got to get the, you have a baby? Yeah. You have so much stuff that goes with the baby? You got more than one baby. My God, you, yeah. need, a, you need a bus at that point. Well, yeah. You got strollers. They're huge. They fold. They go in. And then if you're buying anything like groceries or something, they got to go beside the stroller. And then the baby itself... All that stuff is a bit like a tank now. So if you got the the seat that clips into the base, it's all tank status these days. Yes. So you're going to need some space to get this all sorted out. Well, a happy story with uh, Daryush. Oh, I got it. It's coming up real soon. Oh, okay. <laughs> Willie, dude, trying to move, I move thought you, too uh... quickly on the show. <laughs> you're trying to fly through it. Anyway, so this, I guess, it, was it a text message or email that went out? It looks like a text message, actually. It came off Twitter. This is a user on Twitter, Peyton, Peyton Schaefer, Peyton L. Schaefer, whatever. His name's Peyton on Twitter. And he says, Tesla is officially reaching out to Cybertruck reservation holders and confirming a late 2021 production start. And if you click on the actual uh, uh, tweet, I guess, it says, congratulations on taking the first step to becoming a Tesla owner. The Cybertruck will start production in late 2021, and will be a, an exciting time for everyone. The Cybertruck will start production in late 2021 and will be an exciting time for everyone. That's a bit, the phrasing's a bit weird there. We have exciting news. We opened a new location in Fort Myers, which is close to this individual buyer. Since the Cybertruck has yet to be released, we would like to extend an invitation to test drive a model that is currently available. <laughs> mm. <laughs> You know, this, how about the Cybertruck? I mean, look, we're trying to open up a new place. I, we just escaped California. Stuff's getting crazy over there. We're over there in Texas. We got the Giga Factory. Just give us a break. Give us a minute. You mind driving something else for the time being? We got other models over here. You don't need that truck. It's too big anyways. Mm. Where are you going to park it? Uh, come, head over down to Fort Myers there and give yourself a run in the Model 3 uh. or Y. You're available for test driving. Here's the address. Yeah. What do you think? Good luck or not good luck? I wonder how you feel about that. For somebody who ordered the truck, put the money down ages ago. Uh, I, I, I think they're trying. I, I think it's good overall. I mean, okay. you get to experience the Tesla ecosystem with like another But do you car. feel do you feel in any way like <laughs> you didn't order? Do you but. feel in any way you're being sold to? Like they're they're you're like, no, I need a truck. I ordered a truck. And they're like, look, 
we don't have yeah we don't have a truck but we think you should buy one of these i think the butt matters and, and uh uh you know uh they they could have completely ignored this and just like hey wait it out cyber trucks coming when it comes so it's an alternative i think it's a good job yeah no i for the record i don't mind it either that was may 18th when what is today the 20th that's like a day before ford's event so yeah. there's that part of it too they're like don't go order that other truck yeah. remember you have a reservation yeah, do for that. this truck don't yeah. you forget about that reservation you gave us a decade ago because uh we're still building these things but anyway mm -hmm. it appears based on all the feedback and tweets and whatever else you, you have to read into uh late 2021 start time all the energy right now is around building the facility that will build the truck and that hasn't been built yet they were mm -hmm. looking for a spot they're over there near austin texas now so it should be nothing but up from here i wish them the best i still can't wait to see that thing in this studio it's coming the cyber truck is going to be imagine it that's going to be something to look at oh yeah uh also the other one that some people are patiently waiting for the roadster they have been showing off, I guess it's an early version of the Roadster in the Peterson Automotive Museum. They got it sitting there. And actually, Elon said it's going to look even better than the one that's sitting in the museum. So he brought the conversation back around how fast this thing can actually be. Because when they announced the new Model S and they were saying sub two seconds, zero to 60 time, people were like, wasn't that the spec that you were talking about for the roadster shouldn't the roadster be a lot faster turns out with the spacex package some are speculating that it's going to be able to do zero to 60 in 1.1 seconds doesn't so, it have a jet engine in yeah there? yeah that's what the yeah. spacex package actually is oh. it is going to be I mean, hence the space portion obviously Demonstrating the versatility of electric power and adding extra distinction to the car's already high performance, the SpaceX package would outfit the Roadster with cold air rocket thrusters positioned at the rear, allowing for a 0-60 to 60 acceleration time of 1.1 seconds, largely unprecedented amongst modern road Large? Completely unprecedented. <laughs> I don't know. What's a production car? 1.1 1, 1. 1 seconds. Uh, I tried out two. Is two is like... Two is... is is that the fastest car? I I'm guess. sure it would be. I'm sure. I mean, maybe there are those jet cars that have oh, right. beaten yeah. that record. That but looks like a rocket. As far as a road car production car, I mean, that is absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, this is even more on the back burner than the Cybertruck. So don't get your hopes up. Just chill. Just go look at it at the museum. All right. Now, this is that feel good story you were talking about. Elon Musk coming through. This is Benil Dariush, the UFC fighter who recently won his match against... You know what? I like the look of this guy. This guy looks like such a regular dude, yet he's a killer. That's kind of cool. Yeah, super humble guy. If he rolled up and he's just like, hey, well, how, what you up to, man? You want to have a barbecue or something? You'd be like, oh, this is just a guy from the neighborhood. Yeah, I trust him. You might, you <laughs> might, even, you might even borrow some pizza from a guy like him. <laughs> borrow pizza? You remember the other day? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You were I mean, walking around town knocking on doors in your neighborhood looking for any <laughs> leftover pizza. Remember that? Yeah, that crazy story. Eh? <laughs> it's one of my favorite moments in later history. Yeah. Willie do swapping pizza with the neighbors. I never thought it would happen. Certainly not as fast as it did. You move into the place and then you, all of a sudden you're the mayor of the entire community. Yeah. So you got to take it easy over there. Okay. Because, you know, if you fly too close to the sun, you might get burnt. Take a risk. So yeah. just, I'm just saying, you, know, you come in there no, I hear flamboyant like that, knocking on doors, and then yeah. somebody else down the way says, who's this guy I think he is right here? I know. Swapping pizza yeah. with the neighbor. This Willie Doo type yeah. guy over there on the internet. DJ Willie Doo, as he's known on the internet. Yeah. Anyway, so Darius, he complained at the end of his last win. He called out Elon Musk and said he has a new baby coming. He has a Model X on order. It is delayed, has been delayed for a number of months. And he, he's got to get it sorted out. He said, look, I, I got this baby coming. I don't have a good car. I need a good car to put my baby in. Are you going to come through? I got I to gotta figure this one out. And while Elon couldn't 
immediately solve his issue and give him his own car, which he did say, by the way, we're working on it. We're speeding things out. We had to shut down a factory for a bit. He gave him a loaner, a Model Y loaner. It looks like a performance as well if you look at the rims. And Dariush is very happy. He says, look who came through over here. He says in a tweet, not winning any style contest, but we find a way. And then he has the crying laughing face. And uh, uh, his agent, I guess, Ali Abdelaziz, says Elon Musk came through for Benil Dariush with a free car until his order is ready. Mm. Elon is a gangster. I like this following up like that. Yeah. Um, I guess there's probably other customers that are like, well, I can't yeah, just hey, get man, in the octagon. And that was my car <laughs> that I ordered. Why did he take it? <laughs> Yeah, that's Tony Ferguson's Model Y. <laughs> 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 anyway, whatever. He looks very happy. He's got a place to put the car seat when his wife gives birth in mm -hmm. June. And so that's a that's a little feel good for you. Yeah. Apple put out a funny new commercial. I don't know. Did you watch it? No. Okay. Very, very well done, produced money. Right. They spent money. They're Apple. Oh, I'm not surprised. They're Apple, and they like content, and they like money, and they like privacy, and they like uh, spending money on privacy. And Was it shot? Content about privacy. Was it shot through an iPhone? God, no, it wasn't shot through an iPhone. If it was shot through an iPhone, it would get gimbals everywhere. And That's the trifecta. No, this is movie caliber stuff. Anyway, the, the, the commercial is about a guy who goes to a cafe he orders a coffee and then as he moves through his day you know, he starts the day with the coffee everybody he interacts with fall is following him like your experience online when you're being tracked so the coffee place and the, i don't know can you play a bit of it will apple have a problem i think you can play a little bit of it just to just so we get an idea Felix? here you the music you cannot play holy cow it's a super mega copyright song can I get a taste of your ice cream? You know that song? No. Mind your own business. No. Can I get, is it copyright if I you, do my, I'll do a cover yeah, version right now. I'll do a cover version. So he goes to the bank and then the guy from the cafe is looking and then someone else that he interacted with. And everywhere he goes, he keeps accumulating people. He's trying to get a cream because he's itchy and everyone knows till the whole city is following him. And he's back in his apartment and he clicks to no longer be tracked and they all vanish, mm -hmm. which of course is your new uh, iOS feature encouraging you to stop the tracking. And then it says privacy, that's iPhone. Yeah. And, it, and then all of a sudden you see the app, you get the Apple logo with the lock on it. And you're like, yeah, Apple took care of me. Yes. Like I'm, I have one of those. Uh -huh. I have one of those iPhone things. Yeah. So I'm that guy. Mind your own business. No. Mind your own business. Um, but yeah, I like a, it. I yeah, like it's it. A it's a cool ad, man. And, and they're all walking through. Like, they had to get this shot. And COVID. That's a shot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a shot right there. You're up here. What is it? Is it a crane? Or it's a crane. And you got, I mean, what is that? A few hundred people following him at that point. Uh -huh. He's feeling stressed out. And you still got the dude from the cafe is still at his right-hand side, even though you see hundreds of people in the street following him through his every move. Yeah. So, yeah, you could check it out. I think it's, it's fun the way they did. They do this stuff well. And they do this stuff well. And it's amazing how content can be so persuasive. Mm -hmm. You don't have to say it. You don't have to explain it. You got, how long do you have to work with? You got one minute to work with. That's the ad. And you just want to know, you want to let the general public know that everything they do, they're being watched. You just, that's your mission. You got one minute. It's hard to imagine a better way than that. Mm -hmm. Good job. Apple. And T-Mobile. Well, no, T-Mobile, they, yeah. they just, what do they do? They foot the bill a little bit. They throw a few bucks in there to get their logo in on it. But it's a good piece of content. I got to be honest with you. Huh. How's your privacy doing these days, bro? Terrible. That's what I thought. 
Apple Music lossless and spatial. People had questions about this new upgrade, this audio format that Apple was going to support in Apple Music. And, well, specifically the fact that you weren't going to be able to use this format on any of their audio equipment, not their expensive headphones, not their less expensive headphones, and not the HomePod or whatever, anything. Bluetooth is out of the question. And then people were like, well, what if I plug in the cable to the AirPods Max? Because it has a cable. And they're like, it's lightning. It's lightning on one end. That should work. No, that doesn't work either. The lightning to mini jack that those headphones use doesn't work either. So now the question is, okay, how do you listen to this stuff? What kind of audio gear do you need? Well, you need wired headphones. But this is actually what stood out to me about this particular article. Or, yeah, this little detail is even though the cable you buy from Apple, which is a lightning to mini jack to go with the AirPods Max is not capable of supporting lossless, their little adapter, you know, the lightning to mini jack is. Hmm. That has a DAC in it. Apple's 3.5 millimeter lightning headphone adapter includes its own DAC that supports 24 bit 48 kilohertz. So high end wired headphones will work. Huh. However, the audio cable that they sell for the AirPods Max does not support lossless streams. Very weird. I wonder what the technical challenges were there, if there were any, and if it's possible for them to fix it and put out like a V2 cable that is capable with a DAC in it. I, I don't know if, su if such a thing is possible. How come Apple didn't, uh, you know, shed light on the adapter working? It's like, oh, yeah, you can get this instead of being silent about it. Like, how would they do that? In a press release or something? What would you... Yeah, when their announcement for the lossless audio... You want that in the press release? You got to use the adapter. I don't remember if it was. I didn't read I the press know. release. So I'm not sure. Maybe it was there. But you, you want it played up. Well, that's what we're doing. We're playing it up right now. Well, yeah. we're letting the people know. All right. We're doing that job. Um, all, and then also, if you want to take it up a notch, so that's just Apple Music lossless. But what if you want to be crazy and listen to Apple Music... High res lossless. Well, now you're in crazy land. Uh -oh. Now you're part of a select group of individuals with the best ears on planet Earth. And that's 24-bit, 192 kilohertz. Beyond CD quality. Unbelievable stuff. Here, you need a USB to lightning dongle to your iPhone or Mac. Mm. So you got to step your game up if you want to get into that range right there. Mm. Uh, what can I say? I don't know. I think a lot of people, if they're going to do it, they probably are going to go just to the lossless and use that little adapter. But I don't know. We'll see. It's a feature. It's supported. Go tell me if you can hear the difference. Hmm. Google is opening a retail store in New York City this summer. So look at that. It's actually at the base of the, their offices. I don't know if you've ever been there. Um, it's a nice prime location. It's in Chelsea. And it's kind of a weird time to be opening a giant retail store because of well anywhere but also new york specifically which got kind of hit hard i guess by covid comparatively it's a city it's a dense place and uh, a lot of retail has suffered google can do it i mean they're google well i don't think they're too worried about that but this gives them the opportunity to showcase their variety of hardware offerings uh, you know, they recently had the Fitbit acquisition. They can show all the Fitbit products. They can show the Pixel products. They can show the audio products. They can show the Nest products. It's a couple of products. Yeah. Uh, they have a lot of hardware, surprisingly. It's been growing. So it's nice that they have a like physical space to show it off. Oh, yeah. They got the streaming stuff. I almost mm. forgot about that. Um, yeah, it's growing. It's growing. It's not crazy, but it's growing. And if you work in a few accessories, I guess they got, they got Stadia over there as well. Uh -huh. And they got Pixelbook listed. So there's a, a handful of things, a couple of partners they could get in, in in on the mix. I don't know. Yeah. Good on them. Um, but obviously, this puts them sort of squarely in competition with the others who do the same. Apple does a great job of this as well. I mean, there's Apple stores everywhere. You even want to know how many are in New York. It's it's a lot more than one. Yeah. So what does this mean about Google's future plans? It seems to me that they're pretty invested in this hardware idea. 
uh, whether it's the expansion of the lineup and the availability or it's physical retail stores, it seems like they're they're in it. They're in it now. They're probably not going to bail on it anytime soon. Mm -hmm. As in the past, they've been pretty quick to put things down when they're not working. Oh, and they also made the announcements with Android Wear. So presumably there could be partnerships. If you think about it, Android's on, it, on everything. You could have Samsung products in there. Yeah. I don't Pixel know. phones during launch. It's nice. Because they're collabing on the watch. Yes. Right? The Tizen yeah. hybrid situation. For sure. Um, but Samsung also has its own large retail store nearby this location, along with Apple and Amazon a little bit further up. Imagine that. Wow. Um, there's one other thing I wanted to mention. Oh, yeah. Just a little quote here from Google. Google calls the store an important next step in our hardware journey. Hmm. Come, they came to play? I don't know. We got to wait and see. Hardware is hard. I don't know if you knew that. Hmm. Speaking of hardware being hard, Snap has shown off their new spectacles. Yes. Go ahead, Will. Uh, I, I watched the video of this. Same. I don't, yeah. I don't know the use case for it. It's, it's, so it's not being made available right now to the public. Right. It's going to a select group of people to potentially develop for it. AR types. Yeah. <laughs> Are you... Man, I never saw you so upset in my life. Well, I'm just confused. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. What is this for? They tried glasses before. Well, the glasses before, though, were a totally different thing. It was for stories. Did they even call it stories? What was Snapchat's version of stories? They were stories, right? Snaps. Snaps? Oh. But yeah. I'm saying when you had your daily story on it. I think I it was snap. I think snaps. I think it might have been called Snapchat Stories or something along those lines. Oh, okay. Yeah. You sure. Don't, you don't want to get to the bottom sure, of that. We'll, uh, you don't want to we'll get to the bottom of that. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't. I mean, Instagram has stories, and YouTube has stories. So who who came up with the story idea? Yeah, my story Snapchat. Yeah, come on, we'll get out of here. What is a Snapchat? Come on, man. I remember when they first launched that thing about 17 years ago. Oh. Anyway, so originally you were recording video. Those spectacles just had cameras in them and they were more stylish. So it is odd that they're using the spectacle branding for something that's quite a bit different than what they were doing before. There was no AR component to those old ones, right? They were just uh, recording devices capable of adding to your Snapchat story simply through uh, quickly tap in a thing. And that was a retail product that you could actually buy and own. Right. This, on the other hand, is leveraging their um, AR component. Because, you know, Snapchat has always has gathered interest around how they've treated filters and things like this within the app. They, yeah. They've been really ahead of the game in that department. So I think there's, a, there's a, an idea here that somehow AR plays into it and, and that that may be a, an advantage they have, that they may have some talented and in, uh, developers and interesting things to do within AR. Although it does feel odd that it's... You, you don't know exactly what it's going to... Where they see this going and whether they see this replacing, say, the smartphone, for example. We've talked about potentially AR products from the likes of Apple and... Uh, Google, I think, I mean, Facebook obviously mm -hmm. is playing in that space through Oculus stuff, which is also VR. The demo looks sort of cool. I mean, he throws a thing, he throws a bone and a, and a little AR dog goes to get it. I mean, it could be a computing platform in the future, Will. But now the styling of the hardware itself is a little bit off-putting. Uh -huh. It's not a thing... But if you think about the tech inside, it's pretty cool how small it is. Yeah. So. Yeah. What do you got? Well, you I, got something? You're just, you're just very upset about this. No, I, I would say let's just give it a shot. Let's just see where it goes. Because at least this, in this demo, it's hard to imagine what it is. I mean, it's just an AR dog and you feed it. 
That's a pretty. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and he sent, and then he took a video clip of it and he sure. sent it to his pals. But it could be other life events that you could do the yeah, same maybe way. Maybe I'm just not imaginative enough. Yeah, I mean, you could be. It could be like a party scene, and and and, and all your pals look different because they're wearing crazy outfits, AR outfits. You know, you can kind of cr create this bizarre. Uh, imaginary environment and then capture it your way and then send that to all of them after the fact they're like whoa i was a pirate a lot of laughs there well i don't know because they, they, people do these things well yeah. they put the filters yeah. on and the technology's cool look like at me I'm, a, I'm an old man and, and then everybody's yeah. supposed to look at it holy cow you're an old man yeah well look i mean it, it could be like a entertainment I'm not doing spectacle. these things, but the youngsters are doing these things. Sure, they yeah. love these type of things. Yes. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how she goes. Twitter is letting anyone apply for verification for the first time since 20, 2017. You're going to go get your check mark, will they do, or what? Yeah, I actually emailed Twitter, like, right before this show. <laughs> Be like, hey, man. Hey, man. Can you, I get verified? Hey, hey man, I'm Willie Do. DJ Willie Do. Yeah. It's because you don't have the DJ part in there on your handle. If they saw that, then they'd be like, oh, that's who you are. Yeah, I got to change my name. Get the DJ in there. You don't need to email them. There's an actually an official way to do it now. Well, I can't find the button. It wasn't at least on my uh, really? Android Twitter app. Well, you're in a real rush to get this done. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Holy cow. Well, before the floodgates opened and everyone knows about it, I was hoping to get an edge. Wow, I didn't know this was such a big deal to you, Will. Oh yeah. You care to explain? Uh, what's the thing? You're, you're, uh, it's a Pinocchio thing. You're, you want to be a real boy? Oh yeah. I'm a real boy now. Yeah. Um. Actually. It, yeah, it's nice to have. No, nice to no. Have there's a real name. reason for it. I know you don't want to say it, but like, there's yeah. a real reason for it. It's. I'm joking. I'm just joking around. It, they're people you get impersonators and they're trying to goof on people and, sure, and yeah. scam people and it and does it, fun. it does absolutely happen and it's so annoying and then you get the emails like i was scammed by because of this and that and you're just like oh god don't believe anything just don't give anybody money for that let me just say something right now if you ever win a giveaway if you ever i'm never asking you for money I am never asking you for money. It's the same as the Elon Musk Bitcoin scams. It's like you, it's like, look, you're about to double your money. You just got to send me the first bit. Yeah, you got to pay for shipping. Red, red, red flag. Do not go spend, sending money with the promise of more coming back. That's been since the beginning of time. I'll tell you what. Since the beginning of the internet. Don't be sending that money around. No. So anyway. yeah, check marks. Anyway, check marks can, they can't even solve it, but they can help it a little bit. Cause then you'd be like, look, it didn't come from the official guy because the check mark wasn't there. So here's the criteria to get the check mark. Uh, you either got to be in a government, company, brand, or organization, news organizations and journalists, entertainment business, sports and gaming, activists, organizers, and other influential individuals. Which one of these are you now that you're applying for these things and demanding these check marks? Uh, I would say influential. Easy. Oh, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> Holy cow. Uh, You're uh, out here calling yourself influential now? Sure. You trying to influence people? <laughs> yes. Trying to influence the way I, the way I think right now? Yeah. Yeah, maybe fit into that one. I don't know. Um. You like referring to yourself as that, that though? Fits, right? When people yeah. ask you entertainment, maybe. When, when they ask you, "Hey, Willie do? Uh, what do you do?" You say, "I'm an I'm an influential individual." <laughs> Is that what you say? It's just muttering. Yeah. Sure, yeah, I'll, I'll That's say what that. you say. Yeah. Anyway, they say you're going to get a response within a few days, but it could open up to a few weeks depending on the volume of applications. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. But you can do it what all within the app. You don't have to like, you know, tweet out verified or Twitter. Right. Yeah. Now here's the thing about the verification. 
part of Twitter is that they suspended the program all the way back in 2017. It's mm. crazy as how long it's been turned off for. I'm sure there's been some exceptions, but it's 2021 right now. I don't know if you knew that. And it's about time they open it back up. I guess they had problems in the past, but they got it right. And it is a useful feature and they should totally uh, get that sorted out. Sounds like they're getting that sorted out finally. Yeah. I'm sorry. It uh, You can go into the settings and do it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I, I didn't say that. Yeah. The, you have to have a government issued ID, official email address, official website. That's uh you have to go through a series of questions sure, so they can yeah. say, see if it's necessary to. And also, if you get denied, you can apply again in 30 days. Hmm. It's kind of nice. I mean, these are that's one of those cryptic processes that now people know. Oh, there's a way to just like uh, having a partnered channel on YouTube or Twitch or whatever. There's a pathway. Yes. Like, here's the official way to do that thing if you hope to do that thing. Uh, the founder of TikTok. The owner of ByteDance, I guess the founder of ByteDance, founder of TikTok, owner of ByteDance, founder of ByteDance, makes TikTok. They also make Douyin. Anyway, he resigned as the CEO. He says, I lack some of the skills that make an ideal manager. Kind of a big deal because uh, the app's been doing all right. So obviously he's been doing okay up until this point. We don't know all the details. Uh Apparently, ByteDance is the world's most valuable startup. I don't know at what point you stop being a startup, but anyway, it was founded all the way back in 2012. He's going to move to another position at the company, and one of his co-founders, Liang Rubo, will become the new CEO. That individual is currently running HR. This sounds to me, as I look at the quotes here, that it has to do with uh, looking for someone a little more social. Uh, here, here he says, the truth is I lack some of the skills to make an ideal manager. I'm more interested in analyzing organizational and market principles and leveraging these theories to further reduce management work rather than actually managing people. Similarly, I'm not very social, preferring solitary activities like being online, reading, listening to music, and daydreaming about what may be possible. So he's saying I'm a little more introverted, I guess. And when it comes to managing a company like this, you got to deal with all these people. And I can still be involved in the company, focus on the things that I prefer. And then this other individual who maybe is better suited for that portion of the, for that specific role that they can take it and mm. run with it. So that's the, the front facing version of it. But also you could go conspiratorial if you want and say, no, nah, this guy's been muscled out. Someone told him it's right. step down. You're done here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't go there. I, just, I was just saying you could, if you wanted to. Yeah, I can go both ways. I was just saying, if you wanted to. Did you know anything about Pepsi in Japan? Uh, no. It's not even the same Pepsi. It's not? No. They're, How? Apparently it's a billion times better. Really? Maybe you had this experience with Mexican Coca-Cola. Yeah, it uses, uh, I guess, cane sugar? Yeah, sugar cane. Like, People love the Mexican Coca-Cola. Anyway, around the world, it comes out a little bit different. And Coca-Cola, just like elsewhere, has been crazy, crazy dominant, even in the Japanese market. And so Pepsi has been trying all kinds of things to steal, to snag some of that market share. Not steal, earn some of that market share. And so they've been fine-tuning all the time the recipe to suit the Japanese taste buds, whatever specifically to that market might be appealing. And they claim to now be releasing their the most refreshing cola ever. You know how Exciting. they're gonna, you know how they're gonna do that well? What's that? Listen to this. It's very specific. Unprecedented freshness mm. achieved by using raw spices that were prepared without heating. This is said to give the cola a deeper and more vibrant taste than before. You want to give that a run for its money or what? You down for a sip or what? Uh, I want to be refreshed. Here are some comments. Listen to this. All of this was done based on feedback from Japanese people who said that they wanted 
a cola that made them feel alive again. I want that cola. Yeah. Bring it over here. I want a cola that makes me feel alive again. <laughs> Just <laughs> bing. Start eating raw spices. Do -do 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 -do. Is that the sound for a refreshment? That's right. Yeah. It's kind of similar to when Mario gets the mushroom and he boop 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 boop. Uh, yeah. Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun. You never play Mario? Yeah. Dun 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 dun. Yeah, that's the underground. Yeah. You never play Mario? We're going to get demonetized. Yeah, I've been doing too much karaoke. Too much coca roki on this one. coca <laughs> Uh, so here's some other comments from potential Pepsi customers in Japan. I don't get why it's Nama, but I want to try it. By the way, that word, I don't know how familiar you are. It can be interpreted in different ways, such as raw, fresh, and life. Mm. I wonder if it's like draft beer. That's another customer. I really like Pepsi, so I want to try this right away. Someone else says, eh. Pe normal Pepsi is fine. Uh. Got my face with this. I added that last part. Mm. Anyway, we got to give this one a sip. Uh, because we want to feel alive again. For sure. And it's the responsibility of our cola to do such a thing. Uh -huh. All right, here's his last one. You know what? I just want you to watch the last one, Will. It's a YouTube short. It's in trending. I believe that's just under 20 million views. Shorts are taking over the universe. Everything is short. Look how short it is. Cool, I'm scrolling. It's short. 20 million views. YouTube algorithm. Is it short? Show it. Give it to them. Anyway, this clip on trending, 20 million views just under May 7, 2021. Title, talent catching fish, emoji of fish, deep iceberg fish in brackets catch fish comma ice fish end bracket another fish emoji tiktok number 195 <laughs> 20 million views go for it will hit the play button Oh boy. I'm looking at you, Will. So it's trending number 10. I'm looking at you, Will. I'm looking at you. Well, for the audio listeners, would you uh, want to describe what's going on? I'm looking at you, Will! So there's like a small puddle in like, and there's two fishermen the who are grabbing a net and dragging the net to land. And there's a lot of anticipation. There's a fake crowd screaming. Oh, is it a fake crowd? Well, where are they? Are they behind uh, the camera? The, oh, I think that's what you're supposed to believe. The whole thing... Yeah. And it looks like a man-made, like they obviously dropped those fish in there. And I, <sighs> <laughs> I was, I was in it. I was in it for a bit. So, so this is a Rick roll. Like you get Rick rolled, like want want. Sure. Is yeah. that what this is? Yeah. Well, the like and dislike ratio. It's not like uh, people completely hate it. No, people it's, don't come. It's come, pretty good. People like don't. The, come, people like the it. Likes, but I don't. Is it? Is it? Is it meant to be humor? Like, what is it exactly? Is it meant to be a troll? Is it meant to be a rickroll? Are we idiots? I guess at the. Are you laughing your head off right now? No. Yeah. No. So we're idiots. We suck. Mm. 
It's the greatest thing that's, it's the greatest clip that's ever been uploaded. 20 million views in one day. Well, not one day. Actually, it was uploaded on the 7th. So it's been sitting there for a while. Why is it in trending right now? What is going on? What kind of games are being played? Everybody in the world got it suggested to them all at once. Mm. Yeah, man, this is, uh, this is the life that we live right now. I'm telling you, games are being played. <laughs> I'm telling you, games are being played. Yeah. And uh, you and I, guys like us, old men like us, we're not privy to it. No. Those games. Yeah. We got we to gotta try to navigate this one out here. Yeah. We're in trouble out here. We're barely hanging on out here.